Boardwalk Bullet. Opening in 2007 at Landry's, the restaurant chain's Kima Boardwalk. Boardwalk Bullet was, for a time, one of only two coasters operating in the Houston area, the tallest wooden coaster in Texas, and by far the biggest coaster until Landry's built Iron Shark in Galveston. But is this Gravity Group wooden roller coaster a truly great coaster? Does it lack quality due to its cramped and small space? Does it offer the roller coaster fix so many Houstonians long for? Find out in this review. After Six Flags Astroworlds closed in 2005, the Houston area was left with one operating roller coaster, a minor mic model at the North Zuma Fun Center, which was recently renamed from Celebration Station way back in 2005. This minor mic model would later move to the South Zuma Fun Center around 2012, before becoming defunct after its relocation to North Carolina when Zuma Fun Center closed in 2017. Yes. The fourth largest city in the U.S. had its coaster credits reduced to one kitty coaster. But then, Landry's decided to step up for Houstonians. Opening in 1998 as a collection of various restaurants in Landry's chain, the Kima Boardwalk offered some rides to help entice diners. Then, in 2003, Landry's opened the Downtown Aquarium as its flagship property to promote its brand in the Houston area. After its success, Landry's decided to go big and add the third largest wooden roller coaster in Texas to its Kima Boardwalk property. Later, after two coasters that previously had held the record for the tallest wooden coaster in the world, the Texas Giant and the Rattler were converted into RMC hybrid coasters, Boardwalk Bullet, by default, became Texas's tallest wooden coaster in 2012, where it remained until 2020 when Texas Stingray tied it in height but beat its drop by eight feet. It is still, as of 2022, the second tallest coaster in the Houston area behind only Landry's Iron Shark at Galveston's historic Pleasure Pier. Boardwalk Bullet has a light cowboy theme since it is right next to Saltgrass Steakhouse. However, my complaint about this name is that Kima also has a Boardwalk Beast. Since the beast makes me think of a wooden roller coaster and bullet makes me think of speedboat, it was very confusing separating the roller coaster from the upcharge speedboat attraction, which is especially important if you are trying to confirm on the website that the roller coaster is open before visiting. The boardwalk beast is the nice red speedboat. The boardwalk bullet is this wonderful roller coaster. If you're still confused, here is the sign Landry's put in the exit ramp to the roller coaster. As for Boardwalk Bullet, it is a perplexing Gravity Group wooden creation. As the Gravity Group's third roller coaster, it has a seat belt and more traditional lap bars instead of the new Timberliner cars used by the company. For this coaster, it matters how much the operators push down the lap bar. As when it was looser, I was really able to enjoy the airtime pops this coaster offered. The front rows offer nice pops of floater airtime and ride much smoother. The back maximizes the largest two drops, but is noticeably rougher. This train was a walk-on during my visit on a Sunday. However, the operators waited for a set amount of time before they would begin checking restraints, since the train was never full. This made marathoning not that easy, as it only ran every 10 to 15 minutes. They also weren't letting people stay on to re-ride, so you had to walk all the way around a good 2 to 5 minute walk to ride again. Since the train was held for about 5 minutes anyways, you could normally catch the next train, despite walking around. However, the operators would not check if people were about to show up or reopen the gates to fill out the train as multiple people, myself included, showed up right after they closed the gates and had to wait for the next train. After a lengthy stay in the station platform, you depart around a small pre-lift turn. Unlike other similar turns, this turn is heavily banked, which negates the nice laterals that could be here. Instead, 
you will treat it to the interesting sideways leaning feeling that you will experience on most turns throughout this coaster. The lift tail is okay, but doesn't look out on the water or at any great views. But with the amusement park rides to the right and the old school buildings to the left, plus the great views of the coaster itself, this is one lift hill I really wouldn't mind being stuck on, or even having to walk down. Then, you navigate a turnaround before the first drop. This turnaround drops you far enough to get some speed, and has the aforementioned banking that makes it ride differently than a neutral or unbanked turnaround. As with almost all the hills on this coaster, you crest the first drop, meaning you slow down at the apex. Most hills even have a small chain lift to prevent the coaster from falling backwards, if it loses too much speed. The first drop, though, is fantastic and really blew me away on my first ride. The front offers a decent pop of floater air time, whereas the back really lets you feel how powerful this drop is. Some 90 feet drops disappoint, but this packs a solid and enjoyable punch. Then, you're in for a crazy amount of turns and hills. The first turn zips down low beneath the entrance queue before a quick hill followed by a turn to the left, which takes you to a high up turnaround near the water. Then, another quick hill followed by a slower turn upwards leads you to the second highest point. This slows the train a lot, but the second hill is almost as good as the first and is a wonderful element on a ride like this. The second drop is followed by a quick hill and another turnaround over by the water. Then you're treated to two bunny hills followed by a left turn by the parking lot. Then you navigate an S curve with a bunny hill in the middle, which leaves you heading out towards the bay again for another turnaround. This is followed by a double up and a turnaround again near the original queue line. Then you go up an upwards hill followed by a turnaround near the parking lot that sends you on to the brake run. Overall, it is a crazy layout with many turns, a record-breaking 42 crossovers, and so many airtime or bunny hills. The coaster is flawed though. I really enjoyed my first ride, but it quickly deteriorated on my subsequent rides. This may have just been the result of getting dizzy and headaches from this and, and other flat rides at the Kima Boardwalk. But, at least to me, it highlights Boardwalk Bullet's flaws. The coaster rides rough, which isn't always something I dislike. I love Six Flags Over Texas's Runaway Mine Train for its rough parts. And I still rank Fun Spots, Kissimmee's Mind Blower highly, despite it being very rough. But, with valleys on this coaster pulling strong positive Gs, the shaking combined with these g-forces made my head start hurting quickly. Those are issues I can live with though. It makes Boardwalk Bullet a good coaster, but not a good ride to ride again and again, which is only problematic because of its placement as the lone coaster in this park. However, this coaster also suffers from poor pacing, which again, normally isn't a deal breaker for me and I sometimes even enjoy poorly paced elements. But just like you design coasters in Roller Coaster Tycoon, most hills have a small chain lift to make sure the car doesn't valley. This is more noticeable in the front, since the back row is still whipped over the hills. But no matter where you sit, there's a noticeable on again, off again rhythm that makes this coaster deteriorate with multiple re-rides. Overall, how good is Boardwalk Bullet? That's a hard question. Part of me wants to rank this on my initial ride, where I was blown away by its drop, speed, airtime pops, and overall length. But Boardwalk Bullet beat me up and disappointed me with its flaws on multiple rerides, which leaves it somewhere between Busch Gardens Kumba and SeaWorld San Antonio's Texas Stingray which is a pretty wide range in my ratings. Ultimately, I put it right below the B&M Floorless Coasters and Runaway Mine Train, which I rank very highly, but right above the Gravity Group's Mind Blower at Fun Spot Kissimmee. 
I enjoyed my first few rides on this coaster, but as the only coaster at this park, I wish it was better so that I could truly enjoy riding it again and again. What are your thoughts on Houston's only wooden roller coaster? Is this a crazy fun coaster? Or does it have flaws that make it not something you desire to ride again and again? Let me know, because I really need help to make a final decision on this coaster. And, as always, cup can crap.